Welcome everyone, Marcos here. And this video is an introduction to the virtual study space for Launch School students. The first part of this video is an explanation of what it is. The second part is basically a tour and tutorial of the Gather Town space itself, so play pause as you'd like. Now, this virtual study space built via Gather Town is a place in the metaverse where students can virtually study with others to hold each other accountable, study on their own, or randomly run into other Launch School students, alumni, or perhaps staff. One can hold a group events such as study sessions, special events such as talks, showcases, Q&As, and AMAs. You may also attend and hold open study hours and office hours in our breakout rooms. We have specific rooms for each course. Now, this allows us to create a more meaningful human connection. You can live code with others and much, much more. There are various coder pads all over the area that you can use to either study by yourself, live code with another student, or groups of students. There are also whiteboards available in larger rooms. This is all made possible without the need to install anything, without the need to subscribe to anything, without the need to worry about your privacy, but most important of all, without the need to generate multiple links. We basically have one link to do it all. You could just say, I'll meet you at the place. Another amazing thing about this area is that there are no time limits on meetings. You can hold a meeting with your group or with another student all day without getting that annoying interruption. So the flow of ideas keep going on. To use this place, basically you need two things. All you need is a working microphone and a browser, preferably Chrome or Chromium based, and you can log in through any operating system. Quick update, Gather not only has an app for your computer, but for mobile devices as well. We'll be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year round. This space will keep expanding and being updated, so ideas are also welcome. With that said, let's get on with the show. If this is your first time, you either click or enter the link that's provided for you. You need to allow your browser to have access to camera and microphone. You enter the password and click submit. Once you're here, you'll be presented with some options. You don't have to choose anything now. You can edit your character now, but you can also do this once you're in the space. So for here, I'm just going to again enter my name. Now here you can choose your microphone or camera. You don't have to have them on to enter the space. I'm going to click on join the gathering. At this point, if this is your first time, you'll be presented with a tutorial. I'm going to skip it. Welcome. If this is your first time here, you'll spawn or appear at the entrance. Before I get into controls, how to interact with others, coder pads, classrooms, private public areas, let's get into the resources that we have the dashboard down below. This is very useful. When you click your name on the lower left, you have many options. Uh, the first thing I like the status. You can write here whatever you'd like. Hey, I'm at the written portion of this test. I'm preparing for the interview or the written, or I'm at a specific course. You can use that to share information with others. Next, we have change character. As I said earlier, you're not stuck with your avatar. You can change it at any point, however you'd like. Next is quiet mode. If you see somebody with a red dot on their name, that means they're perhaps very busy or concentrating on something. But if you turn it back on green, Perhaps you can chat with them. They're available for talking. Next, let's get into respawn. This is very important for those that don't know of this concept. If you're in a metaverse setting or in a video game or in a place where you want to go back to the origin point, for example, here you can get stuck in locked rooms. You can click respawn and you'll appear back at the entrance as you saw earlier. Microphone on turns the microphone on, turn microphone off, turns it off. If you click on the camera, you can either turn it on or turn it off. Next, we have emoji or emoji cons. Here, use them however you like. Some students like to use these for Q and A's. Next, screen sharing. I'll share a folder, an empty folder just to demonstrate. And you click on that and anybody in this near area can actually see the screen. Let's go to the right. The chat section allows you to interact with people personally. That's the inbox. You have nearby, meaning whoever's in that vicinity or room will be able to see your message. And then you have room. Room basically allows you to communicate with the whole place. All right, on the right hand side, you'll notice that if you click on that icon, you can see who's available in the current room right now. 
You have many options when you right click on any user's name. For example, if you click on locate map, you'll get a straight line that guides you exactly where that person is if you need to find them. You can also click follow and you'll automatically go to that person's position. Using this option as well, you can message someone directly if you need to contact them. Let's get into controls. How do I move around and how to interact with things? Okay, arrow keys up, down, left, right. Again, the arrow keys allow you to navigate in this world and anything that you don't have access to will obviously be blocked off. As you can see, I can't go through these counters. Next button is the X for xylophone. The X key allows you to interact with anything that's obviously interactive. So if I go near a sign like this one, it'll turn yellow. If I press X, this is just a note. But if I go near the statues, you'll notice that it's just a picture saying welcome. That's as far as um, moving around and uh, communicating. For extras, we have the Z button for zebra, which allows you to dance. We have the F key uh, for fox. And this allows us to throw confetti around in fireworks if you're celebrating. You have the G key. The G key allows you to go in ghost mode and go through things. So if there's another person near you or is blocking you from entering a room, you hold G and you'll be able to go through them or on top of them. Let's get into how to interact with others and how to use the areas. If you're near someone, you'll notice that the cameras will turn on and microphone if you have them on. When you're in a public area such as this area, if I go near someone, then I can interact with them. As soon as I walk away from them, the camera and microphone settings are gone. I can't hear or see them. Private areas, for example, let's go into one of the rooms. Here you'll notice we have JS and Ruby themed rooms. They're communal rooms. They're not specifically for that course. So if you have four or more students with you and you want to have a meeting for anything, such as the writer's block or Vim group, you can go into one of these areas that's not occupied. As soon as you go into one of these private areas, you'll notice that everything gets dark, except for the area you're in. Anybody who's in this room at this moment will be able to hear and see each other and interact, but no one outside of this room will be able to hear or see you, like in a real classroom setting. Now, every room is equipped with resources, such as coder pads. You'll notice that as soon as I go near this computer, if I press X, anybody who's there will be able to be in this actual coder pad space. Before we go further, I want to talk about some issues students have with coder pad. For example, he'll enter my name and I'll click go. Some students won't be able to see that preview button that you just saw. You see this one right here? What you need to do is either zoom out command minus or control minus or another trick of the trade if you don't know this whenever you're in a browser if you click the tab key it'll go to the next possible interactive point such as the button we click let's get started and guess what we can code with other students and have fun and teach each other that's coder pad in a in a communal room uh, we also have whiteboards obviously a whiteboard that allows you to draw on it or write your pdac and communicate all right, so as soon as I walk out this private area, you'll notice everything goes back. Everything that's bright means, again, it's a public area. All right, so that's a private room. Let's go into communal table area, such as this one. This also has a coder pad. This is open area, right? Like a cafe, anybody could sit here. If anyone's near you, you'll be able to see or hear. hear. Okay, so that was private rooms, private areas, and public areas. Let's get into the study zone. These are the study pods. On the right side, the ones with numbers 1 through 24 have their own coder pads to share with others. So if there is more than one student there, you can actually share that coder pad between each other to live code. The ones on the left side are just sandboxes. You'll be the only person to be able to access that coder pad. So as soon as they go into the right side, these are called the personal study pods. You can have this main outside area as interactive. So if you're standing here, perhaps you can ask a question to a student or chit chat, but again, no one within the tables or outside this area can hear or see you. Next, let's get into the study pod centers. I'll go to number 24. As soon as you go into that little area, you'll have a tile to the left and to the right of you. If you have other students you want to live code with or chat with or have a meeting, automatically go into meeting mode, right? You can click on the screen and you'll be able to hear and see each other. Each one of these desks has a communal 
coder pad, meaning anybody in this little table will be able to live code with each other as opposed to the other side that has sandboxes. That's public areas. Let's get into breakout rooms. Few students have been using this for study hours, meaning that they'll meet here in the middle, chit chat, and then they'll separate between different courses. And each cubicle obviously is secluded from each other. So if you want to hang out with one-on-one students and study together, you can do that here, 120. But again, if you're having an event, you can use them for whatever you'd like. All right, next we have the auditorium. This changes differently. We have uh, different events here, such as students showing their projects or having a presentation. Additionally, we actually have uh, leads Q and A's uh, as a reward for sharing their, their time. If you're interested in becoming a lead, just send a message to the uh, spot moderators. It's a really good way to get noticed. It's a really good way to meet others and practice public speaking, right? Everybody benefits and it's not really that difficult. You just uh, give up your time and prepare. Either we give you materials or you provide your own materials. And again, it's a really good way to practice what you know. Sometimes Chris has AMAs here. Students, um, graduates, you know, capstone grads will just randomly come in here and have AMAs. And again, this is a communal room, right? It's just uh, dedicated to the women's group. And lastly, a new addition, which is really cool, is Chris's office. Again, this will change from time to time. And so the etiquette for Chris's office is really simple. He'll announce it either here and in Slack saying, hey, I'm going to have office hours and we have a waiting area and we have a private area. If you see Chris in there without anyone, obviously go in there and say, hey, can we meet? But if you see Chris in there with another student, or a group of students, this is the waiting area. And we have lines here. Earlier this week, you had some students for the greet meet and you'll see that their line is there. I'm just gonna click that. And that's about it. Again, if Chris is here by himself or another staff member by themselves, feel free to go in there and talk to them. But if you see them with eight or a group of students, then wait here to be called. And that's about it. Sometimes the door will be locked. We'll all right, so this place will keep on expanding so long as we have the resources available to us. With that said, that's going to be it for me today. I'm Marcos from New York City, signing out. Cheers.